I thought I'd record, uh, well I was asked to record actually, an extra video, just a little bit on how I process images. Now it's a, a difficult question for any photographer to answer simply because um, each picture, particularly in underwater photography, the processing can be very individual and bespoke to that image. So talking about general terms is quite hard to do. Um, but I'll, uh, what I've done is I've picked out a wide angle picture and a macro picture from my recent trips that I haven't processed yet. And I thought I'd run through the, the processing of them. I've tried to pick sort of standard macro and st standard wide angle. So hopefully that there are some general lessons in that. Um, I would say that um, the first thing I would say for me is, although I'm good at rescuing problem pictures in... Lightroom and Photoshop. The reality is, is that I shoot so many more pictures than I'll ever have time to process in my life. That for me, any picture that requires any sort of big rescuing work, um, just, um, I'm likely never get to get round to. So I would say most of the time when I'm processing pictures, I think um, this year in 2023, I've I've taken over 60,000 pictures on uh, underwater pictures during my travels. Um, I've done a lot of diving this year. I've done 287 dives. Um, and, and during that, I've shot 60,000 images, you know, including, um, you know, going snorkeling as well, you know, shooting lots of pictures of stingrays at the sandbar and Cayman, for example, don't count in the dive count, but they do count in the picture count. Um, and of those 60,000 pictures, obviously I try and delete as many as I can to keep that to a manageable number each year. But the reality is, I'll probably only in my lifetime have chance to process a few hundred of that 60,000, you know, and that's if I really dedicate myself to doing lots of proper processing of pictures. I'm not interested in quickly batching an image out just to put it on social media. I have, have one rule with processing and that's always process something once, never process it twice just so you can share it once. So I never share my pictures till they've been processed once and processed once properly at high resolution so that they're useful to me. Um, I can't sell pictures unless they are processed out at high resolution and the subject matter is identified and that sort of thing in them. And I do sell um, lots of my photos to paying customers each year, particularly in editorial use. I, I don't really, I mean, you know, I think a lot of underwater photographers, they tend to go into the field with the intention of, of shooting competition shots. And that's, that's definitely not me. Um, I try and shoot for, for publication. Um, I don't feel that I'm sort of a, an out and out photojournalist. I think uh, for me, a photojournalist, I mean, which is a very, very, you know, for me, a very, very respected part of photography, is a photographer who goes into the field with a, a clear story they're trying to tell. And they craft images to help them tell that story. And I would say that, that my job is very similar to that, but I, I tend to go into the field without a singular story that I want to tell, but a whole range of stories, because in reality, my pictures will be used by me, but they'll also be used by lots of other people. And because of my background in marine science, I tend to understand what makes an environment where I'm shooting unique. I tend to understand how the animals there are living their lives. Um, and... I try to bring the, and, and the sort of conservation and environmental pressures that they're feeling. And I trend, try to bring to bear all those stories in different pictures that I produce. So when I'm in the field, I'm not working on one photojournalistic idea. I'm shooting pictures that, that tell lots of different stories. And maybe even though I might shoot two pictures relatively close together on a dive, they may get used in completely different ways. Um, related to two completely separate stories. Um, but I, I, I feel that I'm able to sort of cater to both of those. So as a result, um, I process pictures which I feel are going to be useful for me for selling pictures because I'm, you know, generally each year, I mean, or I think that this year I did count it up for a talk I gave recently. And I sort of sell about a thousand images a year, get licensed um, from my, my um, collection of images. So, you know, it's, it's a major, major income stream for me. So I tend to use my time in the field to do that. It also actually dovetails quite nicely with running workshops because um, on workshop trips, generally most of the photographers there are quite competition focused. They want to shoot the, the high value, high impact subjects. 
um, which they know are more likely to catch the eye of competition judges. Whereas I'm often very happy shooting the everyday subjects, which are perhaps more useful for the way I use my images in terms of um, uh, them being available for people to illustrate books, magazines, stories, um, and that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, um, all that's a long way round of saying that I, I tend not to process pictures that need lots and lots of sorting out because of the fact that um, there's always far too many pictures to process. So why not process the ones that are going to be relatively quick and easy? That said, I did try and choose two pictures that do need some work doing to them in post. Um, and we'll start with the wide angle shot, which is from PNG, um, showing this, this very nice... Um, um, what's it called? Um, orange elephant ear sponge with this lovely red anella sea fan growing out of it. You've got a golden damselfish in there. Um, and then in the background, you've got some sort of um, reef material, reef wall coming up. And then in, at the top of the background, we've got nice fusiliers in the background. There's a few bubbles crept in there from me breathing out. Um, and we've got a few large surgeon fish. And those are the elements that I sort of want to, to come to play in my picture. So if I press D... Hopefully that picture will come up in the processing. Oh, it's actually had some clarity added to it already. Sorry. I'll take that back out again. Um, I don't really see much difference in that. So um, the first thing I would say with, with this picture is having opened it up, it actually looks a little bit better than it did previously. But I still find that the um, lighting on the foreground sponge is a bit contrasty, a bit bright in some places, a bit shadowy in others. So the first thing I do is try and select that sponge area. And I'm generally okay with the overall white balance of this picture. I think the blue is pretty reasonable in terms of its color and the color on the sponges is pretty reasonable. So I don't think I'm going to adjust the white balance in this picture. I think the exposure is is fine. I think it's also pretty much correct. Um, but the two areas that I really want to work on are the lighting on this foreground and also the gradation of blue in the background. So we'll start with the foreground. And the first thing I'm going to check is to see whether... Um, oh, there are some masks on here already. So I've already put masks on this one. I picked the wrong picture. So I'm going to just go back to the beginning again. So that's that's un, that's unset everything. You see, it hasn't made a big difference. But now I've taken that mask off. You can see that there is some, there is a bit too much strobe light coming up from the bottom. So the first thing I am going to fix is put a graduated filter, a linear gradient filter, up from the bottom, drop the exposure down on that, and also the highlights down on that, and just bring that 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 up lighting out of the picture. I'm now going to see if subject selection will pick up the sponges, and it's done a pretty good job on that. And I'm not going to do a big adjustment on the subject selection, but what I am going to do is I'm going to try and take the peakiness out of that light on the on the sponges. So I'm going to drop the highlights a little, increase the shadows a little. And what that's doing is it's just softening the light on those those sponges and giving them a nice look in the image. I might also just tweak the touch of saturation in at this point. I don't really want to put saturation in the whole picture, but I want those those sponges are incredible colors in PNG. So I really want that to come through. Now, the other area that I think could do or do with some work is that blue. And for me, because it was a slightly, it was early in the morning, it was a slightly cloudy morning. The surface blue is nice, but deeper down in the picture, this blue just gets too dark. So what I want to do is actually a diver down in there, but I'm not going to worry about the diver. I'm not going to take the morale to anything, um, but they will probably influence how much I lighten up that blue because I don't want them to become particularly visible. So I'm just going to quickly with a brush, actually, I'm just going to brush into through this area here and just brighten slightly that sea fan. I just wanted to come through in the picture. And now I'm going to add a graduated filter up through this section here. And then I'm going to intersect that graduated filter, which means combine the mask with the subject selection, which I already know picks out the sponges really well. So um, intersect that with select subject. And then I'm going to invert that. So it's now just picking up the blue in the background. And that's quite a nice mask for me now just to try to lighten that blue. And I'm just going to do it in this case here with some exposure and shadows. And I think that's just just enough to lighten that blue at the bottom of the frame. I might just just put a little bit more blue back into it there. Um, and that just so I want it to be obviously still have that gradation, but not such a big gradation. Now, the bit of the image I don't like um, is this reef here, which is sort of semi silhouette, semi detail. Um, it's not an easy fix in a photo, but what I would probably do is, is brush through that area there in the picture. And what I'm going to do in that area is just take the blacks down a little bit, take a little bit of clarity out of the picture um, and just let that recede a little bit behind the subject. 
and I need to just finish that brushing here in front of the um, golden damsel. I'm just going to tidy up what I just did because I've actually just picked up a bit of water there. So that's all that's done is it's just given that reef a little bit more presence behind the subject. Um, and that was easier to do on a local adjustment than a global adjustment. And then I'm just going to put a bit more global contrast and clarity in now. And you'll see that the picture really now starts to pop. But I wanted to get those overall adjustments in first. Um, I still find there's too much light in this bottom corner. So I'm going to pull another graduated filter in from that bottom corner. And just again, not those highlights and exposure back. And just trying to de-emphasize that bottom corner of the picture. I, I want everyone's eyes to go straight to my colorful sea fans and sponges. Um, enjoy the nice golden damselfish. And then see the silhouetted reef behind. Right, the final area I want to work with, I'm just going to put run another um, um, brush down the side there. And I want these fish to stand out a little bit more. So I'm just going to tickle in a little bit of dehaze and a little bit of clarity. And I'm just going to have to push the shadows in as well, just to keep the watercolour looking okay there. Um, and the aim is really just to make these fish stand out a little bit more. So before that brush, um, you can't really see a great bit of difference, but if I zoom in, you might be able to. Before the brush, it's like this. And then after the brush, just makes those fish stand out a little bit more. It basically, I'm just sort of just trying to increase the clarity, clar the visibility of the water um, and help those fish stand out and just pull the eye through the frame. I think the water's gone a little bit dark around them now. So I'm just going to go back into that brush because it's the that's the bit that's causing the problems. And I'm probably just going to tweak the there the exposure back up again and then now the water looks a more natural color again so that's that's probably all the processing i think that that brush on the reef wall was just a little heavy-handed so i'm going to go back to that brush which is brush number five mask number five and it i've put too much negative black in there so just drop that bring that back up i've still got a bit more contrast in the background but not tons and that's all i want to do to that one um and I would then take the picture on into Photoshop and just tidy up a few things. There's a little bit of backscatter here. I wouldn't probably take away the diver. I'd just leave them. They're so in the background, it's not a big issue. And I don't really want to make the picture into a, a modified or a manipulated image just for the sake of a very distant, hard to see, hidden behind a piece of coral diver. I think they can just sit in the background there and it would disappear on a piece of paper when it was printed. Um, but I probably would clean a few of these specks of backscatter. I would say generally clients expect the pictures not to be antiseptically clean. You know, they, everyone accepts water's got bits in it. But the, where backscatter begins to catch the eye, there's a few specks down here that, that catch the eye. And for me, I'd probably want to tidy those up. Right, onto the macro shot now. Oh, sorry, there's loads of pictures up there. Macro shot here is a little bit flat, really. Um, it's just a sim simple shot of this... Um, four-lobed porcelain crab. These are very common porcelain crabs on soft corals, and in this case, a sea pen. On a sea pen, this is a slightly unusual sea pen, and that was a slightly strange color one. It was kind of a yellowy individual. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, but it's, but I like this, this, this individual. What I really want from the sea pen is I want all the polyps of the sea pen to really stand out. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to tip the whites up um, and a um, bit of clarity up and a bit of exposure and contrast up. And that would just, just, I really want those, the whites of all the um, polyps to come out on the sea pen. Now, I now find that the, the central bar, the central stalk of the sea pen is a little bit bright. So I would now just grab the, that graduated filter and just, just take the edge off that. I just find it just, just catches my eye more than I'd like it to. So I've just taken exposure and, and the highlights down on that. Now let's have a look at our main subject, the porcelain crab. He's a little bit overexposed on his eyes, and I think he could probably do with just a little bit more oomph around that area. So I'm going to just drop the highlights down a little bit around his eyes, and then put some contrast in. And I'm going to try some dehaze on him, actually, and a bit of clarity. And I just, just want him just to have a little bit more three-dimensionality about him on that brush. So beforehand, he was like this, and afterwards, it's just darkened up his face there's no overexposure now you can still see those nice eyeballs uh, the eye spots coming through um and i think that's pretty nice there and now i'll go and have a look at the global adjustments for the picture i'd say i normally do global adjustments first and i um, but i 
I'll just go back and revisit them now. Just a touch of texture, touch more colour. And I think that that's now got a nice look to it as a picture. Maybe a little bit more lift in the shadows. So there is some backscatter coming through here. You can see the backscatter there. There's a few specks on here. This is a picture where I probably would clean most of these. Obviously, this is the antenna of the crab, so I'd leave that in. But most of these more obvious backscatter, because they're on black, they actually stand out more. So the ones that are in amongst the polyps, maybe I wouldn't get rid of all of these. But I think the ones in the black I probably would clean up. Now, I could just brush it in Lightroom now, back, you know, select the black background. And I could hide that backscatter very quickly if I just do, I want to just do select background, it will pick up that background area very nicely. Oh, it's picked up quite a lot of polyps as well, actually. Um, I could intersect that and get rid of it, but I'm not going to worry. I wouldn't, personally, I prefer to leave every speck in my pictures in Lightroom and then use Photoshop to, to clean them up. That way, if, say, in six months' time I come back and decide I want to use this picture in a contest, I'm not suddenly going, oh, look how lovely and clean I shot it. And then when I actually go back to the original, I realize it's full of specs. So I never take any specs out in Lightroom. I always do it in Photoshop so that when I look at my pictures in Lightroom, just look at the raw files, I know which pictures are completely clean. And obviously this one has got too much backscatter to be competition use, but it's perfectly good as a as a nice illustration and it's not it haven't it doesn't need any crop or anything so it's going to be a nice 50 megapixel file both these pictures are obviously from the a1 right hopefully that's been a useful little run through um so thanks for listening bye